Hi, my name is Richard Leiter, a self-published author of literary fiction, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Thoughts on Writing. So today I just wanted to make a few uh, comments about socialism and and run with it. I don't have a, a grand plan here, but I just want to say some things off of the top of my head. Now, I think, I, I think we all realize that um, Stalin was not a great guy and that Mao was not a great guy. Stalinism and Maoism were responsible for the deaths of well over 100 million people. I mean, I don't know what the exact figure is, but it's in, in, in the, um, the scores of millions, um, well, probably well over 100 million, uh, and a lot of suffering beyond the actual deaths. Um, but, but what about socialism itself? Because, you know, Stalinism and, and, um, and, and Maoism really kind of came from, from, the, from, from the whole, emanated from socialism. It became totally, it totally, Stalinism and, and Maoism uh, um, totally morphed into something murderous and tyrannical. But, but what about socialism? Was, isn't socialism itself stripped of um of these characters um isn't isn't it a good idea i mean isn't peace on earth um a good idea brotherhood among all all peoples um liberty equality fraternity i never understood how that wasn't the same thing as um as socialism uh, actually the you know what the difference is but isn't that a good idea rich i mean don't you want to have peace on earth um, and the first question I would say is, okay, well, what's your definition of peace on earth? What's your vision of peace on earth? That peace on earth means that we're all sort of clones, that we're all sort of in a numbed, becalmed state. We all wear the same uniforms. We all don't own anything. We have, none of us has any property rights at all. Um, well, I mean, that, that's not peace to me. That's just being robotic. Uh, so that's the first thing I think of but the second thing that I think of is um, you know it socialism peace on earth utopia here on earth seems superficially like a wonderful idea and that's why it usually appeals chiefly to the young because they can't discriminate yet they don't see the subtlety of the danger in it um, as soon as you say let's have peace on earth let's work towards that let's try to change things the moment you try to change things you are opening up the door to controlling things and once you begin to control things you are opening up the door to more tyranny and more bloodshed um, it's as if when you look outwards um, to the world to want to change things uh, when you look to the world of the newspapers and the headlines and you want to change the outer world you are already condemning yourself at some point to having your um, your altruistic motives morph into um, murderous regimes so you're dead in the water from the very start that's why a so socialism changing things always there's always the implication that you want to look out you want to change things in the outer world you're dead in the water when you begin want to do that um if you want to really change things i would go with gandhi if you want to change the world change yourself if you change yourself well peace on earth will take care of itself if everybody is concerned with looking inwards, doing things which are creative and satisfying, all of this other stuff, the utopia on earth will just naturally come. Um, or it certainly will not be the chaotic mess that we have now. Um, but in order to change yourself, you have to have the ability to look inwards, to look into yourself, to go deeply into yourself and to do that you have to be able to tolerate and even welcome solitude and these are things which are being very quickly eradicated from our entire globe um, 
What do we want now? We, we, we've all been dumbed down, and I'll go into the reason as to why we've been dumbed down. Um, um, I mean, socialism loves the idea of dumbing people down, the idea that people don't think for themselves anymore, that they can't look deeply, because it makes them more manageable. It makes them easier marks for the revolution. Um, they're obedient. They, 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 they're obedient serfs or slaves. So Marxism encourages that. I mean, um, socialism in, seems to encourage that, in my experience. Um, we, what we do is we've lost the ability to look, for instance, into the past, into the great works of art, and continue to derive nourishment from them. You know, we look at, you know, the, the great works of art of history, and, and we say nowadays, well, that's old hat, that's boring, we've been through that, we need something new. Now, personally, I'm able to look at certain works of art from the past over and over again and, great, and derive great nourishment from it. For example, I've listened to Beethoven's last piano sonata, Opus 111. Um, I, I guess I've listened to it 30 times every year for the last five years. That's about 150 times. Maybe once a week, give or take a week. So say 30 times a year. That's 150 times. And I've never become bored with it. Every time I listen to this music, it's like a wellspring for me. Yeah, I derive more and more inspiration from it. It never loses its freshness. I find that most people are incapable of doing that. Not that I'm the greatest, I'm so great, but as a general observation, I've noticed that people just don't aren't into that. They've lost the ability to do that. Instead of being able to look inwards and find ever renewed nourishment in the works of the past, they replace that because they're be they become so hollow and so superficial. They replaced all that with the mania for the new. They must have something new. And why do you need things that are new? Because you immediately, whatever, whatever is out there within 10 minutes, you get bored with it. You're like a kid. A kid has a, has a, um, a toy, a new rattle. And they, they, they play with the rattle for about 10 minutes. And then they start crying again. They get bored. They complain. Mommy, give me a new rattle. I've had, had it with this one. This is basically what we do. We want ever newer, um, more convoluted, more... Um, ostentatious um, works, contemporary works of art um, in our movies uh, because we become so numb. Um, we just want to have in the third act of a movie explosions and, and, and no matter how big the explosions are in movies, it's never enough for us. We become numb to those explosions. And so we need a bigger explosion. And then we become numb to that. And we need a bigger explosion. It's all due to our inherent deadness and anesthesia and numbness. And it's a fucking tragedy that this is the way things are. Um, how did we get this way um, to this point of complete anesthesia? I mean, before I, I, I even get to this point about how we got there, just take a look at the internet. What is the internet, essentially, when you browse it? It's basically a bunch of podcasts about taking shortcuts to everything, having a shortcut to getting great sex, having a shortcut to being able to paint great, having a shortcut to enlightenment, enlightenment in three easy lessons, having a shortcut to being able to play the piano, having a shortcut to making huge sums of money, um, having a shortcut to having your YouTube videos um, get um, 10 million hits. It's all about shortcuts. It's all about doing something um, um, without struggling for it. Um, this is all a sign of our inherent deadness. Um, 
when I look on the internet, um, I try to be as folk. You know, Harold Bloom, the um, uh, the the academic, uh, taught at Yale. He said he described the internet very well. It's a gray sea out there. That's it. I mean, unless you, when I look at the internet, I have a specific reason for going into that gray sea. I want to research something, and I try as best as I can not to be distracted by all this other crap that's out there. Because, you know, nowadays, this, the, the, the internet is like uh, being on the checkout line at a supermarket, and you see all these newspapers, these uh, tabloids, you know, share impregnated by aliens from Mars, or, you, you know, one of the ridiculous things. It, it's so ludicrous, it's just done to get your attention, because you're so dead to everything. So I try to do that as best I can, although even I can be hypnotized by all this crap every so often. So anyway, what was I saying? How did we get here? How did we get to this point of almost complete numbness, complete superficiality, um, the inability to look inward, to tolerate solitude at all? Um, well, I mean, I don't have an exhaustive list um, of it. I think one of the biggest things is, of course, um, the, the, the socialist um, attitude which has become the moral high ground on our globe right now that's probably the biggest thing because like i say socialism wants us dumbed down um just off the top of my head what are some of the things that have really really dumbed us down um in the recent past um um well um the first thing i would think of is drugs pharmaceutical drugs Everybody is taking some form of pharmaceutical drug, mind-altering pharmaceutical drug, Valium, well, um, Wellbutrin, um, Buspar, um, you name it, some kind of um, antidepressant or uh, serotonin uptake inhibitor. I mean, when I'm driving on the highway, I mean, I try to drive carefully, but I have no idea if the person on the other side of the road who's coming at me is high as a kite on Oxycontin or Valium or Wellbutrin or Prozac. I mean, look, you can't really be a human being who feels deeply, who has access to their emotions if you're chronically on drugs. And a lot of these people are chronically on drugs since um, they were young people. I mean, is it really necessary for a person who's 25 years old to be on three different types of psychiatric medication? Is that what they have to look forward to for the rest of their life? Well, for, for a kid to be high as a kite on, um, on Adderall or some other um, amphetamine because he's been labeled as, um, um, you know, what's, what's it called, ADHD? I mean, uh, you can't, just on that basis alone, just on the drugs, you, you just can't, um, you, ca you can't be anything. You're already dead in the water, you know? I mean, you know, if, 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 if you have a little stress in your life, which everyone does, you can't avoid it. If you have a little stress in your life, this is already treated as a symptom of depression or treated as a symptom of some kind of a psychiatric disturbance. We have to medicate that stress, you know? This is an abomination and this has, just that alone, as I say, is, is, is probably om almost completely responsible for those people taking drugs, for their being, uh, for their being dead, and that they literally are anesthetized. The other huge over thing which leaps out at me immediately is technology has also very, very efficiently <laughs> excuse me, dumbed us all down. And I'm not just talking about these smartphones um, and about the internet and computers. I'm talking about television. Television uh, is the great god of numbing everyone down. Um, I got rid of my TV set about six years ago. I mean, I just couldn't stand it. The only things I watched there was Doc Martin, which I found amusing, and some cooking shows. That's it. I found everything to be offensive, including the shit they, they put on PBS. Um, so I stopped it, and I don't regret it at all. So this is completely mind-numbing, and of course, the, you know, the genie's out of the bottle now. They're not going to, they're not going to revoke, you know, or recall computers and smartphones and so on. But this is an overpowering, um, 
deleterious has, has an overpowering deleterious effect on 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 human beings um those two things alone um are are just are just huge they're just huge another factor um is the fact that for the last i don't know since the 50s um the united states has has un un um parallel prosperity we as americans have been blessed we've been very fortunate with all the prosperity that we've had you know the united the u.s dollar the federal reserve note is has has been the um uh the uh reserve currency of the world for um you know over a half a century um and as a result of that we've had this great prosperity and it's possible also as an, another thing i'm thinking of i don't know to what extent but um well we because we've grown so prosperous we've also grown lazy and fat and spoiled um and as a result our art our 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 contemporary art has grown fat and lazy and spoiled um uh it's the art of people who are bored with everything so let's just try to do something which kills the boredom let's try to excite ourselves with new and ever more violent forms of expression it could be that too but i'll tell you something if the u.s dollar goes as the um, reserve currency of the world which it seems to be pretty rapidly right now as i record this and we have a total collapse of our society because of it we're going to get back to the basics real fast real soon we're going to have a real wake-up call as to what is important and what is essential and get back to our basic human roots real quick we're not going to have the kind of art that we have now i suspect so um hold on so that's it uh that's what i think i think that the the, the thing that i see happening the most in the world or in my neck of the woods anyway and from what i see on the internet is the overwhelming way in which we have lost the ability to look inwards the ability to discriminate the ability to rank things you know um you know as as uh, you know uh, my friend paul rhodes wrote a book um recently called art in the age of anxiety and he makes the the point the beautiful point that nowadays everything is potentially beautiful everything is potentially ugly everything is potentially art well if everything is potentially art then nothing is art um then every, we're, we're sort of like a wash in a gray sea when that happens and this is being encouraged um and if you lose the ability to discriminate what is what is good art versus bad what is quality versus what is piffle if you've lost that ability then um you're foundering in a sea of um of uh, of emptiness um and i see that right now i see that this this egalitarian sentiment which has pervaded everything including art I think mostly of art because I'm very interested in it is 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 becoming the death of us um, and um, as Paul also says very very eloquently in his book the way to get back uh, to creating uh, art that's really meaningful uh, that is a wellspring for us that 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 um, is an ever ever um, present source of nourishment is by getting back to our human roots getting back to our humanity stop being so anesthetized by everything if it's at all possible because if it isn't possible then nothing is possible thank you very much